Hey folks, this is Chuck Suter here with ConstitutionalLaw.org and I'm here with Greg Brannan who is um, involved with an organization called Founders Truth. Can you tell us a little bit about Founders Truth? Yeah, Founders Truth, Chuck, is a group, Founderstruth.org, that is just liberty-minded constitutionals. Uh, we were just tired of being uh, lied to by the rhetoric of our politicians and we want to hold everybody accountable to the rule of law. Awesome, man. And um, there is a radio show, I believe, that uh, people can check you out on the bill. Bill and May show on WPTF 850 in Raleigh. And uh, every uh, Thursday from 6 to 7, we've been going over the Constitution and how it applies to our daily life. This is not an old, dusty document. This is the rule of law we're supposed to hold our, our representatives accountable to. Awesome. Awesome. And um, so folks can tune into that on the internet? No, it's actually on Bill and May's webpage, you can do his podcast. On founderstruth.org, we're actually hooking the podcast up to our webpage. In about two weeks, we have an internet radio show, founderstruth.org radio show. And the key about this is the most important thing is to know that the sovereign is the individual, the individual who's sovereign. We bestow a little bit of the rights to our government to keep the society together, but they are not our leaders. The Constitution is clear. We must understand the power that the Declaration of Independence brings that any legitimate government is only legitimate and protects your inalienable rights. If it doesn't, it's illegitimate. That's the core of who we are. Awesome. And um, you were telling me earlier that um, you were able to speak to a Republican woman, woman's club somewhere. Where was that? Oh. And what was what was your message? What were what were you trying to get across to um, some of our friends that might not see they might see the Constitution a little bit differently than us? Maybe they've taken a little bit more time. Obviously. Um, I'm a Ron Paul supporter, as everybody out there knows, I. and um, we maybe maybe we're just a little bit faster on picking up on some of these principles from a couple hundred years ago than other folks. Right. Um, what were you able to discuss with these uh, individuals, uh, the Republican Women's Club, or anywhere else that you've been speaking lately, and how were you able to get um, a favorable a response from them and and bring forth a message of uh, constitutional uh, strict con constructionist limited government. When you when they love people will know the truth when they hear it. Liberty is the truth, and we don't have to go through the parties. Washington war and the parties divide us, and the true keepers of the Constitution is we the people. So when you articulate the principles without a D or an R and articulate what they are, and people that understand that liberty is freedom and how that's supposed to be protected, it came across. So we're talking simply about the NDAA, we're talking about nationalized health care, we're talking about Agenda 21, and how those are illegitimate because they infringe it on your inalienable rights. It's clear, the government cannot infringe those rights. So our question is, is why is this occurring? It's because our representatives are not following their oath. And the message of truth comes clear, it's very clear. Oh, absolutely. And I've had the same experience, you know. Uh, a lot of you guys know that I am very much involved within the Republican Party, trying to affect change within the Republican Party. And uh, one of my good friends, Nicole Revels, was able to actually uh, challenge a guy uh, by the name of Tom Tillis, you might have heard about him here in North Carolina, on the fact of um, nullification and why it would be important to nullify. And I'll put a link to that video right here. Um, and I would just like to get maybe, what, what would your opinion be on something like nullification? I've actually, uh saw that, that piece up there, and I actually, that's my number one talk. The Tenth Amendment is the crux of the law thing. Understand the idea of the Constitution. It is a legal contract between 13 sovereign states who made a contract. That contract holds the federal government responsible for these certain actions. When those actions are usurped, what's your recourse? That question was what Jefferson and Madison asked. What's the recourse when this federal government, which is actually a byproduct of the state government, the legislative branch usurps its power, the executive usurps its power, and the Supreme Court usurps its power. What is it? Go back to who's sovereign, the individual. Therefore, as Madison said, it's the duty bound to interposition between the individual and the Leviathan of the federal government. So the bottom line, nullification is our answer. Nullification is our historical record. The first nullification documents are Declaration of Independence. Yeah. We said no to the tyranny of King George. That is what we have to understand. When people hear that, and that's what I spoke about yesterday, when they understand the clarification that a legitimate government is only legitimate and protects your rights, otherwise it is not, that resonates. Truth resonates. But nullification is the key. That's why our state legislators cannot flippantly say nullification is elected to the president. Nullification is our duty. They are bound to support the state's rights and protect the individual. It's a no-brainer. 
oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And, um, you know, a lot of you out there also know, I might have a little disagreement with Tom Woods on a few issues, maybe Rand Paul, but Tom Woods is dead right when he talks about these issues of nullification. And beautiful answer you articulated there. As Rush Limbaugh would say, for those of you in Rio Linda, what you're telling me is Tom Tillis is dead wrong when he says that nullification, the best way to null produce nullification of Obamacare and other issues in the state of North Carolina is to simply elect Mitt Romney? The answer... And that makes no sense because an executive branch cannot do by executive order outside of its branch. That's unconstitutional. So you cannot get rid of a constitution, an unconstitutional act by another unconstitutional act. <laughs> and the frustrating part to me is the Republicans are, which again, I'm registered as you are. I'm a, I'm, a Ram, I'm a Ron Paul Republican, but I'm a Republican. Is that Article 1, Section 7, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution states that all appropriations of the House, the House is controlled today by the Republicans, they could defund it today. My question is, why haven't they? And that's a question that is really hard to answer for folks when you put it to them like that. And I, I think that's a brilliant maneuver um, for all of us to uh, gather up and, and, and take to our state representatives and our uh, federal representatives, no, no matter what. Um, it's ridiculous that the Republicans have the control and they're not even mentioning this. They're not even using it as a threat. No. They, they've pretty much just said, no, we, we don't even want to worry about that. Let's just, let's go ahead and, and try to push for Mitt Romney. And anybody out there is doing that, that's fine. I, I might have a little disagreement with you, but that's fine. Um, in closing, I would, you know, first, before we go and make sure I don't forget, again, how do people contact you? How do they get, uh, how do they support what you're trying to do? And how do we network together? Oh, beautiful. Again, the best part about the Liberty Movement, it's decentralization. We don't want a centralized top down anything. America's founded on the bottom up, crucial. Founderstruth.org is our webpage. Um, again, the radio show for the Bill of May show, we have podcasts on there, his webpage as well as ours. We'll be having an internet radio show in the next two weeks. But how do we, what I asked us to do is I asked us to read our founding documents. This is not, I hear politicians when they run for office, they always become constitutionalists and they come, you know, they, they use the words. It is not a joke. The 56 minutes signed Declaration of Independence, they pledged their life, they pledged their fortune, and most important, their sacred honor, and they did not lie. Because of that, we have this freedom. So the question is, is as Washington said, it's we the people are the true keepers of the Constitution. So if we abdicate our role, that's how we are in the position we are. So I'm asking, don't trust Greg, don't trust Chuck, read our rule book, understand what it means, understand the power is you. If we do that, paradigm shifts change. Awesome, and I couldn't agree more. Finally, I would just like to, um, you know, a lot of you folks might have never heard of my friend Greg here. Um, he was introduced to me through my good friend Glenn Bradley, who is has been an incredible representative for the state of North Carolina. It's very unfortunate that he was redistricted um, because uh, I think the rest yeah. of the Republican Party should have been following his lead instead of trying to stammer him. Um, so, just so folks who know just a little bit more about you before uh, before we go, I know you're a busy guy. The um, what is Greg Brannon doing? What what have you done? Where what what what, have, what is your life? Uh, consisted of up until this point. Why are you, and and if you can further um, indulge us, yes. Why have you became come involved with this, and what are some of the things that made you become involved with? First, starting off with your career, your your life, your um, wife, and some of those issues. Well, simple as I was raised in South Central Los Angeles. My mom uh, raised single parent, raised myself, my little brother. Uh, fortunately, the first person in my family to college. My brother was the second. And uh, I became a doctor. I deliver babies. I'm an OBGYN. I'm married to a lovely lady, uh, Jody, with seven children, six girls and a boy. And I'm involved in this because of them. I'm involved in this because this is, I know this is cliche, but I ask us, are we freer today than we were X years ago? And I, and I try to wrap my head around this. Why did our founders literally, literally risk everything for what? When Henry said, give me liberty, give me death, it was over a tax on tea, molasses, sugar, and stamps. <laughs> and today we work for the Federal Leviathan for five months of our hard labor. Late John Locke, the Lockean view of government is, the only function of government is to protect one's lives, liberty, and estate. As he says, property. 
The most important property is your person and your labor. They are stealing from us. We are serfs, we are slaves. The answer is no, no more. They cannot take the bread out of my mouth. No more. So if we don't stand up in unison this way, then they are gonna keep on taking. A bully will not stop if you punch him in the nose. It's time, and the thing about it is, is I'm not looking for a fight. They came after us. Now it's time. When you talk to people about, on the, on the right side, that uh, nationalized healthcare is unconstitutional, great. I agree, it is unconstitutional. Where's healthcare in the uh, Article 1, Section 8? It's not there. But where's set up democracies and legal wars? Where's that? Unacceptable. Defensive wars are, are Augustinian, that is moral. We're not supposed to set up empire around the world. I want to get back to the life around the world as endowed by our Creator. If we share that, as Washington said, then they will gravitate towards republicanism, they'll gravitate towards liberty and freedom, not into these party systems. It's time we understand that every individual is based upon that. Absolutely, yes. Uh, you know, I'm all for the military as well. Love them. Love the military. Salt of the earth. I mean, um, down here in Charlotte, we've got Matthew Rittenhauer, who's a 10-year Marine Corps veteran, and um, goodness gracious, I mean, the Marines, hoorah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but their life is so precious, exactly. they cannot be, they cannot be uh, wasted on things that are not uh, attacking our country defensive manner. They cannot be used as pawns by, by kings around the world. And that's the words when our founders are debating a two-year army, a full-time navy, was they did not want a king to have an, uh, an army because they know by history kings will use them for their own benefits. Their blood is so precious, it must be held the same accountable. And that is crucial to understand about that. If we are attacked, we go. There have been five declared wars in American history. The last time was 1942. We cannot do these police actions. We must hold ourselves accountable on all constitutional aspects. If we do, liberty reigns. Exactly. Liberty, that's why we become a city in the hill. When we show true republicanism, the small r, and the, what liberty is about, then with everybody, everybody prospers, not this cronies and cabals we talked today. Well, yes, and I guess I'll, I'll throw out two more things before I let you go. Um, what have these wars done to our freedom? which is the most important thing. We're supposed to be fighting the terrorists because they hate us for our freedoms. So what has happened to our freedom since these wars with terrorism and, uh, you know, even a little further back, but let's just take the past 10 years and ever since 9-11, maybe even go a little bit back into Clinton. What, what has happened and what has the government done to our freedoms through this? Right. And the second part of that question would be, um, what is your opinion on NATO, the UN, other organizations? Yeah, we'll, I'll do that one first. Okay. I'm using Washington's federal address, paragraph 3037, have no permanent allegiances, because you're gonna fight wars and shed blood for things that aren't beneficial to us. So it's out of it, number one. Number two, a, a war, it says liberties, Madison said, under liberty, under, under war, in a crisis situation, our liberties is the surest way to tyranny because then you lead to a police state at home. Unacceptable. John Locke's view of nature of war, a same thing. The nature of liberty is destroyed in the nature of war. That's why a war must be a defensive action, not of offensive action. Therefore, it is worth society to fight for those battles. So again, under a crisis, under war, the individual suffers. Historically, economically, it's there. We must get back to not doing these things because the war is discretion. I couldn't agree more and, um, you know, Obviously, Jesus had a, a couple words to say, I think, that would back up that idea of um, loving your enemy. Um, it's been a pleasure, Greg. And um, again, I'm Chuck Suter from constitutionalwar.org. Uh, constitutional this is Greg Brennan of bannertruth.org. And, um, you know, maybe we'll have a little bit more information for you sometime here in the future. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Appreciate it.